If you're new here, my name is Charlie, and on this channel, I explore the basic principles of cooking so that we can all become better home cooks. So let's make some cinnamon rolls. Now this recipe works best when you use fresh sourdough starter discard because you still want the starter to be pretty active in order to achieve light and fluffy cinnamon rolls. So you'll ideally want to use a starter that you fed within the last 12 to 24 hours. So in the bowl of a stand mixer or just a normal bowl if you plan to mix by hand, combine 60 grams or a quarter cup of water with 125 grams or a half a cup of milk, both of which you've heated up to around 90 degrees Fahrenheit which is about 32 degrees Celsius. Then to that, add 110 grams of your sourdough starter and stir to distribute it throughout the liquid. By the way, I'll leave a recommended time schedule in the full post on my website, but I usually like to start this process about 4 hours before bed in order to have the cinnamon rolls ready to bake in the morning. Because as you'll see, they're going to need to rest overnight. So once the levain is mixed in, add 300 grams of all-purpose flour and continue to stir until the flour is fully hydrated. Then just cover that bowl and let it rest for about 30 minutes, preferably in a warm environment around 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 27 degrees Celsius. This will give the flour time to absorb the water and start to develop gluten before we add the rest of the ingredients. So after that 30 minute resting period, take your dough back out and add 64 grams of sugar along with 3 quarters teaspoon of kosher salt, 1 large egg, and 2 tablespoons of melted unsalted butter. Then, either by hand or using the paddle attachment on your stand mixer, stir until all of the ingredients are fully mixed. At that point, continue mixing on a low speed as you add another 150 grams of all-purpose flour little by little until that's all fully incorporated as well. Then, switch to the dough hook attachment or if you're doing this by hand, transfer the dough to a lightly floured surface and knead it for about 3-4 to four minutes until a smooth ball is formed. The dough should be tacky but not overly sticky at this point, so if it does seem too sticky, feel free to add just a bit more flour. Now transfer the dough to a lightly oiled bowl and cover it, then return it to your warm environment for another 30 minutes. And after that 30 minutes, we're just going to perform one set of stretch and folds to strengthen the gluten network a bit. So for this, just grab a portion of your dough and stretch it up and over itself, then fold it back down and repeat that process a total of 8 times around the perimeter of the dough. Then once that's done, return the dough to your warm environment for about another 3 hours to finish off the bulk fermentation. The exact timing will vary depending on your environment and the activity of your starter, but by the end of the bulk fermentation, your dough should be just a bit lighter in area than it started, with a few small bubbles throughout. So once you're at that point, it's time to shape and roll out the dough, but before we can do that, we'll have to prepare our cinnamon sugar filling. To do this, just whisk together in a small bowl 64 grams of granulated sugar, 64 grams of brown sugar, I prefer to use light brown sugar here, and 2 tablespoons of ground cinnamon. You'll also want to melt 2 tablespoons of unsalted butter, which we'll use to coat our dough and our work surface to make sure that there's no sticking. Just make sure to let the butter cool a bit so it's not scorching hot, then brush some onto your work surface and turn the dough out. Using a rolling pin, gently roll the dough out into a rectangle about 9 inches tall by 12 inches wide. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the more even you can make it, the more even your cinnamon rolls will be. Now brush just a bit more butter onto the dough which will help the cinnamon sugar topping to stick and keep in mind you don't need to use all of your butter here because you don't want the dough to get soggy as it bakes. So only use as much as you need to fully coat the dough. Then go ahead and sprinkle your cinnamon sugar mixture on top and again you don't have to use all of it if you don't want but I do usually like to use it all. Next tightly roll up your dough and I did a pretty poor job of rolling it up this time but you get the idea. So I'm cutting off the ends here which I'm still going to end up using, but if you really want your rolls to be as uniform as possible then you don't have to use the end pieces. Either way, cut your roll into a total of 8 evenly sized pieces, or 6 pieces if you want your cinnamon rolls to be a bit bigger. And of course, be careful when cutting it because if you slice down too hard you'll crush it and ruin the shape. So make sure to use a sharp knife, it doesn't have to be serrated, but just gently saw back and forth like so. Then as you cut each roll, place them right into a 10 inch cast iron pan or other similarly sized pan, and there should be some space in between each roll to allow them some room to expand. Now at this point you could either let them rise at room temperature for about 4 hours before baking, or you could do what I usually do which is place it into the fridge to rest overnight. Then in the morning, just bring your pan out to room temperature and let the rolls rise for about 2-3 to three more hours before baking. They don't need to rise a ton since most of the rise will happen in the oven, but they should expand just a bit and by the time they're done proofing they should spring back slowly when poked. So once they're almost fully proofed, preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit which is about 190 degrees Celsius. And then once it's heated, go ahead and throw them in. Let them bake for about 25-30 to 30 minutes until the tops are nicely browned and the rolls are cooked all the way through. But in the meantime while those are baking, we're also going to prepare our cream cheese frosting. Ideally you'll want to use a stand mixer or an electric hand mixer for this, but you could always just whisk it by hand too. 
So start by combining three ounces or 84 grams of cream cheese with three tablespoons or 42 grams of butter, both of which have been softened to room temperature, then mix to combine them. If you're using a stand mixer, I'd recommend using the paddle attachment, but you could also use the whisk attachment if you prefer. Now add one teaspoon of vanilla extract along with a very small pinch of salt and continue stirring. Then once those are incorporated, start to slowly add your confectioner's sugar little by little until you've added a total of 180 grams. At that point, you'll have a pretty thick frosting, which you could definitely use as is, but I like to add about two to three tablespoons of milk to thin it out a bit. So feel free to add as much or as little milk as you like until you achieve your desired consistency. And that's it, so once your cinnamon rolls are done cooking, set them out to cool for just a few minutes, then coat them with your frosting and enjoy. Make sure to frost them while they're still somewhat warm so the frosting melts over top, and you could also remove them to a cooling rack if you like, but I prefer to just serve them straight out of the pan for the presentation aspect of it. So now that you know how to make sourdough cinnamon rolls, if you want to learn a few other ways to use up your sourdough starter discard, be sure to click that video in the bottom right corner of the screen. So there you go. I'll see you all in the next one.